Hey folks, this is Kalani. Shadowlands may have just launched, but the first raid is right around the corner. With only one week left to get your characters all ready for the raid, it's going to be a tight fit. But that's what this video is for. Let's have a look at everything you should get done before the raid comes out with the next weekly reset to give yourself the best chance of success, whether you're going to take it easy in normal mode or hop straight into heroic with your crazy guildies. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash TV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday and we will be streaming our raid progress so if that's of interest pop by. We always love chatting with you wonderful folks too so I hope to see you soon. The first thing you're going to need to do if you want to get ready for Castle Nathria is to gear up. Let's face it, the item level requirements for joining a Castle Nathria pug raid in week 1 are going to be fairly insane. If you're going to try and pug your way to ahead of the curve for Castle Nathria, you're going to need a high item level, high enough to get past all those crazies who don't seem to understand how gear and item level works. If you're not pugging, chances are your guild won't be too happy if you show up to raid with an item level 1 40 character, so gear is the most important thing right now. Castle Nathria drops item level 200 gear, so we want to get as close to that as possible. An ideal item level will probably be above 170, and if you want to absolutely make sure that you make the cut, I would aim to be above item level 180 if at all possible. The most important thing you should be trying to do to reach this item level right now is Mythic Dungeons. Mythic dungeons can only be looted once per week per character, so you do have a very low number of chances to get gear before the raid comes out. After two weeks of clearing all the mythic dungeons, my warlock is sat up at item level 178, I can replace one or two items more with heroic dungeon loot, and my legendary is ready and waited to be crafted. So my item level should be a bit higher before I myself pop into the raid, but I think this is a pretty decent starting point for a character to be at. It's worth noting Noting that mythic dungeons themselves don't really require that high of an item level, our guild was clearing through all mythic dungeons without too many problems with item level 150 characters. When they dinged level 60, they bought up a bunch of crafted gear and just went to town. Mechanics seem to be far more important in dungeons this time around, so as long as you aren't standing in all of the gunk and fire and whatnot, you should be golden. Try to do as many mythic dungeons as you can, but if you're struggling to get into groups or get through them, heroic dungeons drop 171 gear, which is honestly probably good enough for normal Castle Nathria at any rate. A mix of mythic and heroic dungeon gear will get you to a really good place. If you're struggling to gear up and get past that 180 mark, there are a few things you can do to speed up the process. Item level 190 gear is currently available, but it comes at quite a steep price. You can probably find plenty of these bind on equip pieces on the auction house, but they're not going to be cheap. If you have plenty of gold to spare, you know, maybe you just made a killing on herbs or a whole boatload of gold with skinning on the initial expansion surge, you can fast track your gearing just by buying it. The good news here is that once the raid comes out, these BOEs will most likely crash in price. There are probably a good number of BOEs from the raid itself, so that will lower prices significantly, but when players can get their hands on item level 200 gear from normal difficulty of the raid, that will also automatically lower the value of the 190 eye level BOEs. So maybe wait until next week before buying them, but you should be able to find some very shiny high item level pieces on the auction house if you're struggling to gear up in time. Something else to consider is world bosses. These are not available just yet, but they will become available when the servers reset on Tuesday or Wednesday depending on your region. So as soon as the raid is available, the world bosses will be as well. I imagine players will flock to these world bosses as soon as they pop up, so you should have plenty of players available to kill them, and there's a chance at item level 207 gear. That's better than normal raiding, so if you are lucky enough to pick up one of those pieces, that's going to be a huge upgrade in that slot, and you won't even replace it until you get to Heroic Raiding. If you have time on reset day before you head into the raid, see if you're lucky enough to snag a quick piece of gear from the world boss. It might just be the last item you need to push yourself over that 180 threshold. And hey, item level 207 gear? That's going to be a massive upgrade for anybody no matter what, so even if you're over that 180 threshold, probably pop by that world boss anyway, you'd never know, it might just be your lucky day. 
Something else you should be working on related to your gearing up and general character power before you step foot in the raid is your first legendary. We're currently in the second week of the expansion, which means we've had up to two weeks worth of Soul Ash from Torghast. If you cleared all three layers of both wings last week, and you cleared them all this week, you should collect enough Soul Ash to create your first legendary. All that's left to do is find a legendary effect, the base item, and two missives, and you can craft the first legendary of your Shadowlands adventures. Sadly, some legendaries do come from the raid, their effects at least, or world bosses which won't be available until next week, but you can still prepare everything else for your legendary before the raid comes out so that when your legendary effect or recipe finally drops, you have all the pieces you need to just slap your legendary together and feel that overwhelming power. If you don't have the Soul Ash just yet from this week, you can do Torghast early in the weekly reset and get your legendary crafted before you schedule raid time. Either which way you do it, try to get your legendary crafted, or at least ready to craft before the raid comes out, and that's going to be a massive power boost for your character, but also a very nice item level bump to show all those pugs that yes indeed, I do in fact have over 180 item level. Now that you got yourself some decent gear, it's time to bring it all up to snuff. There are more enchants available than we've seen in quite a few expansions. We have ring enchants, weapon enchants, chest enchants, cloak, wrist, gloves, boots. There's a wide variety this time around, and not everyone has good throughput enchants for each slot. So just check what enchants are available, slap a few on your gear, make friends with an enchanter. Anything is better than nothing, even if it's not the super expensive weapon enchants, for example. Every enchant you put on your gear is going to help in one way or another, whether that's to keep you alive or to do a little bit extra damage. And if you're looking at joining pugs for your raiding experience, I know some people still look for enchants on gear when inviting people. It might seem petty, it might seem stupid, but it's better to not give a raid leader a reason to kick you if you want to stay in the raid. That enchant on your ring might just be that reason. The same goes for other types of consumables. You should probably grab a stack of flasks, potions, food, and we also have minor enhancements like weapon oils and sharpening stones. Flasks and food are gonna be the big ones. They provide large throughput bonuses and they're the ones a lot of raid leaders look for people using. Potions are a fantastic extra source of DPS or heals, so be sure to grab your best potions before you head into the raid next week, and weapon oils are a nice extra little thing to add on top. I know we'll all be using every little advantage in our guild runs, so pick up whatever you can consumable-wise to make sure you're doing the very best you can in your raids. As far as consumables go, I'm pretty sure almost everything will skyrocket in price with the release of the raid. People are leveling their professions right now, which will oversupply the market. But as soon as the raid comes out and all the chaps who waited until the last minute to buy their flasks and potions swarm the auction house, you know who I'm talking about, I, I'm looking at you. The demand is going to push prices up and up and up. If you aren't a crafter or a cook yourself, I would recommend you try and pick up as many consumables as you can right now, because as soon as the raid launches, most of it is going to be very expensive. That goes for flasks, enchants, potions, food, the lot of it. Buy at least some of it now, and if prices go crazy, you will have saved yourself a bit of gold at least. On the flip side, if you want to make some money off people People preparing for the raid at the very last minute, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are usually the time when prices get the highest, so do whatever works for you. And then the last thing I would recommend you do to prepare for the raid is to read the Dungeon Journal. I'm actually surprised more players don't do this, because the Dungeon Journal gives you almost everything you could need to figure out a strategy for the boss, but the real key here is you will go into the fights knowing what individual abilities do. When you're targeted with an ability that has to be split with other players, you will know exactly how to handle that. If you get targeted with an ability that needs taking away from players, you'll know that too and you won't get the two abilities mixed up, hopefully. Give the dungeon journal a quick scan through, familiarize yourself with the big abilities of each boss if nothing else, and if you want a bit more into boss strategy, you can find various guides that have been made based on beta testing of the raid. I know Wowhead has a few guides up, I think Fat Boss has a few videos up, they're pretty good sources overall. Bear in mind that any guide or video that has been written before the raid has come out could be using outdated information, both for ability 
abilities and strategies. So if something doesn't line up exactly with what you've seen in videos, that's why. You know, if an ability does something completely different, it's because the dev team decided to change it. We will be uploading our quick, concise raid guides as soon as we kill the bosses on normal and heroic, which will probably be the Tuesday the raid comes out. So if you want up-to-date live raid footage guides with complete strategies that are guaranteed to work, look out for the raid guides from us. So, we've got the gear, we've got a legendary, or a legendary ready to craft at least. All of our gear is enchanted. We have flasks, food, potions, weapon oils, all the consumables you could ever ask for, and we're ready and prepared for the encounters to come. All that's left is to wait for the doors of Castle Nathria to swing wide open so we can finally take the fight to Sire de Nathrius himself. What are you most excited about for the new raid? The shiny new high item level gear? Some of the crazy powerful trinkets? or learning more about Castle Nathria and seeing where the story goes from here? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to come chat, hang out, maybe run a couple dungeons with us, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now. And if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who's subscribed on Twitch already and to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time.